so verb t cashmere mm. um uh ocean wisdom mm. dirty dyke i mean and and, the rag and, bone and, rag and bone man <laughs> you know there's an a and r aspect yeah, to this where for real. you probably weren't even realizing it at the time mm. but these guys they had their own missions and they were mm. fucking about to blow definitely you, you had no clue i mean i knew I, you could see the talent you know and i think with high focus being an artist run label that's why it's worked because as an artist i know what other artists would like mm. Mm. and i can appreciate you know what vibes they're on um what could you see in terms of vibes? Like, take Rag and Bone Man as, a, as an extreme case where mm. you know he's gone seismic, and yeah. you, 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 uh, you, did you have a clue that he was a singer? Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official .com. <laughs> You need the Television app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer podcast. All right. <clears throat> That. Everyone's looking presentable, looking good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be, desire to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. The so season greetings as well because it's Christmas. And for that reason, I got you a treat. £10 off voucher for your first booking with piratestudios.com. 24 7 music podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. Get a £10 off for your first booking using the code Killer Keller Podcast 10. Yeah. So that's K I L L A K E L A P O D C A S T 10 1 0. Yeah. Killer Keller Podcast 10. Um, and uh, yeah, chuck it in www.pirate.com. All right. And check the website out for all the information there. You can't underestimate us, we keep it moving. You've got the television app, free download, iPhone, Android, sporting, art, street culture. Come on, fam. Yeah, where are you? It's free. Come on, my guy. <laughs> Inside the house, one of the, he's a handsome lad and it's taken a long time for him to get here. Trust me when I say this guy is the pioneer of UK hip hop right now. I don't care what anyone else is saying. His roster is to die for. All the OGs that you know and love and been playing for years are on this label, High Focus. Mm -hmm. Not to mention Four Owls. Not to mention the new album. This is <sighs> the elusive, the <laughs> awesome Stalin House. Flip tricks. Come Big on, up, my brother. brother. Big up, my brother. <laughs> Much respect. I am Gassio, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Bro. Portugal, Portugal at the moment. Lisbon. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, how's uh, it going? Outside of Lisbon, like near the mountains. Yeah, I mean, people can do that when they're making money off a label. Come on, <laughs> talk to me, brother. How's it going? It's good, man. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Kind of switch things up. Actually, I'm like, yeah, living in the near the mountains, kind of off grid vibe, taking it back to nature now with the fam. Yeah, you enjoying it's, it? Yeah, it's really good, man. It's really good. Takes cool. a, takes a takes a bit of adjustment, or yeah, yeah, it was an adjustment, but. Um, yeah, no, we're into the vibe, man. It's good. And we got a lot of friends and connected to a lot of people. And yeah. with the plane, still fly back, do shows everywhere. I was flying around anyway, so... Cheap as chips, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah. It doesn't cost so a lot. It's about the same price as a train ticket almost these yeah. days. So. Yeah, yeah. But you go into the sun, you see. Mm. You're not going to edit, you know, For real. fucking Newcastle or something. <laughs> you are... You're able to remove yourself from the theatre mm. and take stock. That's yeah, what it yeah, basically yeah. is. Yeah, 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 For real. How do you do this, bro? Like, you... And we were oh, having a chat before mm. we jumped on genuinely admire your ten tenaciousness and mm. i think i think rapport wise that rubs off on people like people see mm. yeah, yeah. see your energy and mm. they want to be a part of it like what makes you tick what's the thing that drives you um i think it's just the love for hip-hop fundamentally you know just like when i fell into it at such a young age yeah. but like quite a lot of that was brought up through going skating in the city and shit when I was really young mm. and I used to see bad depressed commuters like on the train when I was real young and I was like I'm not going to be oh, one of you guys yeah, yeah. it's what I decided basically and it was kind of from that moment on you know is that, that where Flip Tricks came up the name Flip Tricks no nah, it's not actually but um, it's a very skatery name yeah it? yeah for real it is it is <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's kind of how it sort of that was the birth that was where the spark happened you know mm. and then I just just fully dedicated. I guess I get a bit like tunnel vision and mm. just go for it, man. Yeah, I and and this is actually the first time we've actually mm. met and yeah, crossed yeah, paths. Yeah, that's, what, that's why I'm so <laughs> buzzing, man. Like, I'm just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We've, we've done a lot together, not together. Yeah, yeah, for real. It's been a long time. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, 
And watching the growth mm. of High Focus, uh, big up Craig, uh, mm. yeah, for, uh, real. for real, because he speaks so highly of you as yeah, a, man, as a, a distributor. Guy. Yeah, he's a top, top, top guy. Big up all the belief crew. Mm. Um, and, uh, bro, it's, it's, uh, I think a lot of people ask the question how. Mm. Um, how and why wasn't it? Why wasn't it there before? You know, when you fill a space in a yeah, yeah, genre yeah. and it's like, dude, like, of course, mm. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But well, how? How did you get to this well, point? I mean, I think it, like, it was there before, but that was low life, you know? Mm. And that was what was a big inspiration to us. Mm. So when I was 16, that's when I first heard low life, Jess, Task Force, Skinny Man. That's what inspired mm. me to pick up the pen. Mm. And then writing, just recording with mates. All of my mates freestyle. Then every night we'd have beers and just like freestyle, whatever, you know what mm. I mean? And just into it. As time went on, loads of them all dropped off. Yeah. And I was the one that carried it on. And then, um, yeah, low life was just kind of crumbling at the point where we were getting serious. You know, like I was, I made my first album in 2007, which didn't come out. That was pre-High Focus. And then 2010 was when High Focus was born mm. in March when I released Theory of Rhyme. And um, yeah, I just started it at that point because there were no other labels that would take on my my album because there basically were none. Mm. Um, and then from there, I, I met, had loads of talented friends around me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, who were doing the thing. They saw I did a good job. I enjoyed it. Mm. You know, I was hanging around with Jan Baxter. I thought he was... A, and absolutely incredible. As, as one does, you know what I mean? Jeez, jeez. Big up, come on. <laughs> I mean, you do have a, a, a plethora of different friends that are all yeah, very yeah, good at real. what they do. Man, you know it, what on the real, what happened with High Focus, I feel like it was some magical sh shit happened. Mm. Like, just the pool of, like, creative, talented individuals that we mm. were around, and I somehow managed to, like, mesh it all together, mm. like, bring it all together, and, and create this thing and create this platform with the help of all of them. Mm together and just sort of like steer the ship in the direction mm. and because we were all younger and we had that energy mm. and everyone had the skills like Every, that, the, we're all in yeah yeah, all yeah. In. the yeah. fan base kind of like sparked from there mm. and then I was just like right I'm doing this you know and then mm. and then yeah many years yeah. later and we're yeah let's, <laughs> let's just get into this right so Verb T, Kashmir, mm. um, uh, Ocean Wisdom, mm. Dirty Dyke. I mean, and, and the African Rag and Bone, man. And bone man. <laughs> you know, there's an A and R aspect yeah. to this where For real. you probably weren't even realizing it at the time. Mm. But these guys, they had their own missions and they mm. were fucking about to blow. Definitely, you, you had no clue. I mean, I knew I, you could see the talent, you know. And I think with High Focus being an artist-run label, that's why yeah. it's worked. Because as an artist. I know what other artists would like mm, mm. and I can appreciate, you know, what vibes they're on. Um, what could you see what, in terms of vibes? Like take Rag and Bone Man as, a, as an extreme case where, mm. you know, he's, he's gone seismic. And yeah. you, you, you were, you, did you have a clue that he was a singer? I mean, I knew basically Leaf Dog almost really got him. He used to sing and yeah. then like he was real shy at the beginning. And Big up Leaf Dog, by the way. Oh, yeah, for real. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. He's, a another part in another this. skater as well, like for skate real. or die kind of guy. So I fucking <laughs> loved him for real. And um, yeah, Leaf really encouraged Rag and Bone Man to like start singing. And there's even like if you type in HFTV exclusive bars Rag and Bone Man, there's like one of his first videos of him like singing on camera in my bedroom. Do you know what I mean? Really? Where, where we used to film him. And like you can see the difference and the evolution of where he's come from. But as soon as you heard his voice, you know, you knew it was going to be something special. Like mm -hmm. when my mum's been hearing all this, these bars coming out, when she hears, she's like, who's this? You know what I mean? Mum and like, dad's still together? Yeah, yeah, still Fantastic. together, man. And big up yeah, big up mums. He brings up pops, you know. <laughs> uh, families stay together. That's important. Uh, because that's what creates a well-rounded human being. Mm. And if you're sitting there, right, and... They're proud as punch that you've, you, you, you're successful in, in so many different avenues mm. and ways. But there is something about when, I don't know, it's not like you say, I told you so. But when, yeah, yeah. when Rag and Bone Man yeah, yeah. goes to that level and you're just sitting there going, yeah, well, you know what I mean? I can't. Yeah, Mum, no. you know, you know I know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's a good look, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, for real. But that's what I mean. They always back me, like, you know, ever since the beginning. Mm. Like, we've done HF, like the whole thing, just fully off our own back. But at the very beginning for my first CDs, my mum lent me 500 quid, you know what I mean, to press up yeah. my first album. Come on. 
And she even sold some of them to her friends and that. Yeah. And I, I was out on road selling them at every single open mic, every mm. gig, hand to hand. You know what I mean? Got mm. that, paid her back. And then and then from there on, it was tunnel vision, like mm. high focus after that. That's a success story in itself, isn't it? When mm. when your family believe in you so much that they're mm. willing to take the hit yeah, and yeah. you repay it, mm. plus learn some shit at the same yeah, time. Yeah, for real. It, made a big, it makes a big, big difference, you know what yeah. I mean? Your family yeah. being back in you. Yeah, you got brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got one brother. Big up, brother. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Elliot. Hold tight, Elliot. Chapter. DJ Chapter. Come on, Chapter inside the <laughs> Back place. in the day. Yeah, come on. We're only dealing with the OGs in here. Um, and when it comes to high focus, mm. I, I certainly get the impression that um, your fan base mm. isn't just UK hip hop. Like we were yeah. downstairs at the coffee shop yeah, yeah. and my guy at the counter goes, oh, fucking high focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you've trans... You guys have transcended... Mm. What was essentially you like? I mean, we don't want to bring low life up too much, guys. I'll get fucking comments. The <laughs> algorithms will go crazy. But low life for its time was very UK hip hop centric yeah. to, to the purest. Yeah, yeah. But you guys somehow mm. have made that transition. For real. How did you do that? I think there was lots of like. I mean, there's a lot in the whole culture. You know what I mean? Even yeah. drum and bass raves. Like we were all part of that whole scene as well. So yeah. even at our parties, we might be going into drum and bass later. Um, you know, stuff like that. And that's just kind of like helped it move. You know what I mean? I think mm. just being tapped into into all those different things, really. Mm. And every time I, I there is a, a real authenticity mm. to the music that does come out of the label. Mm. Like, there's no faking it. Yeah. And I think that's what people respond to, isn't it? Mm. I think with the four hours, when they came out, I noticed a big thing, like, dudes who are into like rock and punk and that were just like, fuck, I'm feeling these four hours, guys, like, because of the energy, you know, because of yeah. the whole, like, mystique of the group and the vibe and even, like, you know, some of the samples, almost a bit rock-based and just hard, like, hard drums, you know, mm. and the energy is the energy that they kind of, like... Mm. Premiere as well, I think, mm. when you do, tr do tracks with these kind oh, of dons. Oh, days, bruv, yeah. Talk to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about well, yeah, Premiere, that's bro. thanks to Leaf Dog, like, Leaf Dog hooked up that collab. But it was beautiful in the way that it happened because we, he was messaging him for a while. Mm -hmm. We we did our first album, Nature's Greatest Mystery, that was a big success, way more than we ever thought it could be. Toured Europe Come and on, that. Fam. Talk that shit for Come real. On. Come back and then um, working on Natural Order, the second album, which was hard to do because of how well the first one was received. Yeah. Where the first one we made it in two weeks, and the second one took like three years. Yo, but. Yeah. You know, we had to bring that quality, so a lot of tracks didn't make the grade. And then after touring, meeting Premier a few times, Leaf struck up the relationship. We got in with the manager. You know, we sorted out the business stuff that needed to be to be sorted. And um, I remember after we done that, Premier like bells up Leaf and like Leaf's like, shit, like I got a call from Premier coming. Like, Hold oh on, God. let me just take this call. Isn't There's it? something going on in here. Working yeah. Premier's calling me. <laughs> it? You, like drop everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and they had a good chat all about hip hop, and then he started talking about the track and what we wanted, and like Leaf was telling us some of his favorite beats that he liked. Like we want this type yeah. of energy, this type of vibe. Premier come through, sent us one beat, and Leaf was we really rated it, but it wasn't quite the one we're looking for. Then he went back. That's fucking brazen. <laughs> Yo, okay, carry on. <laughs> yeah, which was, which was, but when, you know, then he went back and then he made he made like another one. And mm. it was just that was think twice. And it was incredible. When we heard that, we were like, oh my God, this was the primo beat that we were all dreamt really of. wanted. Yeah, yeah, that we dreamt of. And then um, and then he did some cuts on it like shortly after sent us it with the cuts so we could tell that he was gassed because he'd gone and done the cuts and that. Oh, and, um, God, that's good. Yeah, and then we and then we penned our verse. That was one of the, like, highest pressure verses I've ever had to write, no doubt. I spent a long time, like, you know, every bar was yeah. just, like, really think over Peak it. Peak of your career. For real. Defining moments, right? Definitely. I wouldn't want to indulge too much, obviously, on the cost of something like that, because mm. that's not our business on podcast. Mm. But what I'm curious about is when Leaf, right, mm. says to Premier, yo, mm. uh, uh, not that beat, have you got another one? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious whether he get paid, because obviously mm. you pay the guy. Yeah, He's yeah. a fucking Don. He's a legend. Yeah, you pay him what he wants. And then, well, you know, you've got the door. Mm. You're in, yeah, you're yeah, in, the, you're in. So it's like, but, but, 
I wonder if he pays by the, charges by the hour because if mm. he's made a beat, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, no, it's not good. Can we do another one? Mm. D- does that come under question? Mm. Was it like, was it like, well, I'll cast you another. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, he was be, cool. You know I mean? He was cool. So like the price, the price is ag- is agreed, mm. and um, but then I love that he puts the love into it and that he tailor makes it, you know. Mm. And then he did the cuts, and then we asked him to do an intro, and then he did the one. Oh, it's premiere, bigger than my brothers, the four hours, like oh my with god. the vocals in. We're just like, oh my god, like, yeah. that was the cherry on the cake, you know. And what we invested in it, as soon as we dropped that. Bang, the, Game show, over. the show fee went up, yeah. the bookings flew in, we made that money back quick time, <sighs> on, like, no. we recouped quick time, yeah. so, like, that is a very wise investment, not not only did it completely blow up, up our profile, yeah. and send us, like, travelling worldwide, and tick off a childhood dream, most importantly. Oh, brother, um, that's what dreams are made of, isn't it? Yeah, for real, and I think we were only the second UK artist in the world to work with him, mm. he did something with, like, um... Another group, like a female group, I think, years back. Yeah, who was that? I mean, he... I'm trying to remember. I've got the name on, on the tip of my tongue. But he did something with them, and it was quite underground. And then literally, it must have been, I don't know how long, a decade, two decades yeah. after he worked with us. And he doesn't just work with anyone, you know what I mean? No, you gotta, no, no. He's, he's gotta, very specific. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, he, he's he got this thing where... So you knew that? Where's that coming from? <laughs> um... Uh, he's got this thing, uh, and it's an, an he's he's this he's his own enigma, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's just got this uh, he's got this whole um, um, uh, untouchable level of yeah, yeah, yeah. artistry, <laughs> isn't it? Bro, he's a hip hop god, man. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fucking hip hop god. Um, but but again, like this doesn't come at any surprise when you're mm. when your work ethic yeah, and yeah. everything that you've done. I mean, four four hours in itself was mm. was uh, like you say the whole. I can picture it now. You know, yeah, the masks yeah. and the yeah. kind of tilted head into yeah, the camera. Yeah. I mean, Beastie Boys kind. Of, it doesn't come as any surprise that mm. as as a patented. Uh, uh, brand, yeah, yeah, of of that mm. remnants of Daft Punk or mm. Dead Mouse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for real. It, it's a brand. It becomes its own thing, mm. doesn't it? And you, know, you then get the likes of Premier endorsing yeah. because all of a sudden, click it makes sense. It's more than a British rap act. Mm. Mm. It's got a concept. Definitely. Um, do you take that consideration to a lot with a lot of projects that you do? Are you looking mm. for those sorts of things? Because you are leading yeah, by yeah. example, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, for real, definitely. I mean, I've said it before, but I see high focus like a brain. And like whenever I'm looking for new artists to work with or stuff, I'm trying to find pieces of the puzzle that aren't there yet, you know, and mm. it all makes this massive like creative thing. You know, mm. if you look at different individuals, you've got like Ed Scissor who comes through with his like <coughs> proper poetry, like writing books, like real deep bars. And then you've got Ono Capono coming through as like a full universe of like mm. artistry with his graph and and paintings and and like you know incredible lyricism and then you've got people who just keep it super true to the culture like leaf dog and like mm. yeah you know everyone everyone has their own individual like special place and when it uniforms it mm. you know, it's like yeah yeah he is a <laughs> united front is it ever been okay oh here comes a spicy one has yeah. there ever been like an act where you're just like you know what it fits it fits high focus but it's definitely a risk yeah 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 give me some names man what people that are on the label, or... yeah, and that have been totally turned it around. But you were at the time you were like thinking, oh, well, okay, this is a bit of a because you, you yeah, genre yeah. wise, you're quite wide in the yeah, UK yeah, pop spectrum. Real. I mean, even with Dirty Dyke, like he was this, like one of the second or third artists I took on, mm. and at the time, you know, I was rating. It, I thought his stuff was heavy, mm. but he's very like outlandish with very outspoken <laughs> in his bars. Big up Dyke, yeah, you yeah. Know I mean, big up Dyke. <laughs> yeah, uh, he says what the fuck he wants, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, and does whenever. what the fuck he wants as exactly. well. Exactly, beautiful. And not many people, no one in the UK hip hop was really quite talking like he was at the mm, time. Mm. So even with him, I was like, this is a bit of a risk, you know? Yeah. How's it going to go down? Luckily, it went down brilliantly, you know what I mean? And he's absolutely smashed it. It's but a, it's because the talent is there. Yeah, that's right. And that at its core is the thing that steers mm. everything. Uh, is, is there... Is there a level of endorsement? Can you advocate everything that each artist on the roster does? Or do you sometimes have to put some claws in and like, yo, we don't condone that. <laughs> we don't contrain, condone train yeah, bombing yeah. and shit like that. But it's there. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. As an artist, I give all the artists like 100% creative control. Mm. When they hand in their stuff, we just give our opinions, you know what I mean? Mm. That they, they value our opinion and we'll tell it and we'll have a discussion. But mm. fundamentally, it's the... 
it's the artist's decision, but what they get up to, <laughs> that's, their own, that's their own business. Do, do, you must have a, 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 a line-up outside mm. of people that are providing you with demos, yeah, man, showcasing. Crazy. Yeah, how, much, how, many, how many demos do you get? Uh, you probably, day, probably a couple every day. Stop it. Yeah, yeah probably a few a day. Really? Yeah, they're coming a lot, man. But keep sending them, man. Anyone out there, you have to be dedicated. And if, you know, maybe you end up doing what I did, make your own platform. If you yeah. can't find anything, do your own thing, you know, if that's what you feel like. There's certainly that. Um, does it ever get on top? Yeah, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot of work. It's a lot. But, you know, I don't know. I've kind of, just, I've almost like de chosen to dedicate my entire life to like hip hop yeah, almost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's part and parcel of it, you know? How yeah. many people can actually say that? Like genuinely mm. say it, that you, you have dedicated your life mm. to hip hop. Mm. It consumes you. Mm. You wake up and go to bed thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, for this, real. This isn't a joke. Yeah, it's not know? a joke. It's all life, all day, pretty much every waking moment. Do you know what I mean? So and trying to juggle that with family. Yeah. You know, I got a son. I got another new newborn on the way. Yeah. Wow! Congratulations. Big up, brother. He's um, so moving. You know, I'm a wife and that. So mm. like, you got you got to be able to manage it all and balance it all. But that's what you learn as a businessman: how to delegate tasks. That's mm. really important delegating, knowing what to do and not when not to take on things. It's all right to say no to stuff mm. as well. It's all right to say no to certain shows if it's not what you need. Mm. This guy's not going to work, even though you might really rate their music. I've turned down loads of artists who I love their music right? just because it might not be the right fit or we might not have time or, you know. But. Let's get into the delegating thing because that mm. intrigues me. There has to be a level of discipline when you're dealing with family, yeah, when yeah, you're dealing real. with life as a shit, and mm. you know you've got a flight, you've got to get land here, you're yeah, landing yeah. here, but something else is suffering somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. How do you? How do you? How how does Flip Tricks uh, uh, delegate his dailies? What's mm. the discipline? What what are the timekeepings? Like, what's your diary look like? Yeah, for real. I mean, I try. I do kind of standard Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm type thing you know what I mean try be in the office stroke studio mm. nine ten o'clock really yeah yeah and wow. then you know but because I'm work because I'm working for home because I've got built my studio right by my house it's perfect for my son like I can just step out and have lunch and have lunch with him or play for him or he'll mm. run in the studio and kick the door and be like daddy I want to watch diggers yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah 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 it's you know play him a little tune or whatever Bless him. it's cute does he, asked, does he get down with it? Does he love yeah, it? Yeah, he rates it. I asked him what his first single was going to be. He said it's going to be called Big Jump. <laughs> Wicked. Look out for that. See, danger. See, breeding them in early with this rap yeah. thing. Um, I, I, I do... I, I don't see anything f sliding. Mm. It seems to me like, okay, you've got this project. You mm. jump... This put this head on. You do this project. Yeah, yeah. Or you're a CEO, so you've mm. got to handle that. Oh, you got to allow for mm. forty minutes plus for listening through demos. Yeah, a day. yeah, yeah. That's a lot, isn't it? Mm. So I will kind of like you know end up clocking off at about five, but then I do you know the family thing, and then when then the evening that's my creative time. Mm. Obviously, I'm sure you know as a creative, it's not all the time. It's when you're feeling the the vibe. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I make music in the evening, you know. So some days I might start in the work at 9, 10, work till 5, get back in the studio, 7, 8. If it's a good night and I'm really feeling it, might not leave till like 1 in the morning or mm. whatever. Yeah, that's a long day. It's a long day. <laughs> and I think there's a level of managing expectations mm. because in this day and age, like even this as a long form piece of content, mm. people think they watch the fucking thing just because they saw the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't have the time. Yeah, yeah. And with music becoming the way it is and actually almost a soundtrack to a lot of the social media platforms, mm. you've really got, to, really got to attack people. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, you do, man. That's kind of why on my new album, it's, it's 18 tracks long, but I'm dropping six singles. So it's to keep people interested, you know, drip feed it to them like so they can appreciate mm. what I feel is some of my best work in little increments you know mm. so it's like here's one song have that for a month here's another one have mm. that for a month you know and then they really get to feel it and then when i drop that album there's 12 tunes that they haven't heard so which win. is a full full length album there mm. is that people's attention can you hold people's attention for that longer period of time you think i think well it, i mean i think that's the thing with social media and that P people want content yeah. you know you need content so it's about 
generating a hype, keeping them reminded and letting them mm. appreciate what I feel is like the gems on the project and yeah. then give them the whole thing, you know, mm. after a little while. There's different approaches, but... Yeah, how do you, um, in, in terms of approach, how do you... You don't just put out an album. You don't mm. just put out a video. You don't just put out a song. Exactly. How do you work an individual song over mm. that period of time? How do you how do you go about doing it? I mean, once the album's recorded, I'll listen through and, and select. I, even as I'm going, like, sometimes I'll be like, that's going to be a video tune. Mm. So it's about getting the, the right guy to do the right video. And then, um, yeah, generally when that's done, you know, we'll just announce it a few days before, like hyping it up, maybe drop a trailer. Mm then drop the video and then we cut it up into lots of little clips that we'll kind of share for like a month and mm. send it out to the DJs and just try to give it the best push we can. Mm. you got a DJ pool, obviously. Of... Yeah, we got a list of DJs. Yeah. we got guys like MK, yeah. DJ Sammy B-Side. Shorty Blitz, Shorty Blitz Jazz T. Jazz T, always representing. Yeah, them. man, big up the Scratch Purpose as well, my for boy real. Prime Cuts. Like, these guys, it, it just... When you... When you when you have a, a, a scene mm. that is quote unquote ready built, yeah, and you've got a label that mm. they have expectations of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a beautiful recipe. It's like mm. so harmonious, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, you know I mean, you've got all these uh, ready built systems mm. that you're able to plug into, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the DJ culture has mm. always been a, a hip hop staple, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, you know, big up the radio stations and stuff. Back mm. in the day, it was a very different proposition to try and get on radio. Yeah, yeah. How is that now? I mean, yeah, it's still it's still kind of tough. Like we we you know we rely on all of those sort of guys you know that have our back and that support it. And then um, that's what you can really do, you know, make the tune, send it to them and, ho mm. and, and hope they love it and spin it. But it's mm. guys like, you know, MK Shorty Blitz, Sammy B-Side, Jazz T, them yeah. sort of guys that really, like, hold it down for the genre yeah. a lot. For sure. And big up 279 and, yeah. you know, even Westwood for his time was yeah, really real. fucking... Yeah, I mean, I, I know there's... And a, guys like Target and that, he supported my stuff as well. Big like, time, yeah, man. He's a good guy. Too many to name, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but again, going back through the genres and whatnot, mm. you know, Target... He's an advocate of like drum and bass and hip hop yeah. because he grew up on that stuff too. For real, yeah. Uh, he's a don. Yeah, he's a don. He's a don. There's loads of dons. Mm. Back in the day, UK hip hop was a very different proposition to a lot of radio. Mm. I think they 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 were troubled by mm. it and yeah. le legitimizing mm. it on the radio mm. because there was so many other American acts. Yeah, I think yeah that was just because rap like you know that was pre grime and pre people getting used to English people rapping, you know. Mm. Everyone just thought it was Americans and it took a little while for people to get it into their head that mm. people from this country are good at it too. Which luckily happened when we started doing it, I think. Mm. The earlier earlier than that people, the general public was still getting used to it. Mm. People like Dizzy Rascal and stuff like that really helped everyone get used to it. Yeah, man. And again, unapologetic about what his influences are. Drum and bass was a big thing for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, we're seeing a lot more um, acceptance mm. of even like the genre in, in the States. I mean, because mm. it's not just... Yeah, UK. yeah, for sure. Like you're everywhere with Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, for sure. It's the English accent that used to trouble people. Yeah, yeah. But that's They're still taking changed. them a little while to get in there now though in America, yeah, I think. Yeah. Tell us about the album then. Come on, man! I'm the first one I've had. So what do you know yeah, about that? Yeah, for real. Come on. The first copy. It's not even out till February. And the name of it is, sir. So it's Mantra Number Nine. Mantra Nine. As you can see, the the, the calligraphy graph style. For real. I think if you're not listening, watching, and listening, mm. it's and uh, that's me chilling on these massive boulders that are right behind my yard. Yeah. Really? Where I live, yeah, yeah. That's Yo, what, stop it. Yeah, yeah. So, what, the back? With my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> Yo, it's on some... Yeah, yeah, you're on some nature shit. I mean, this is a beautiful lands mm. picture of the landscape. It's the record silhouette. as well. They're all, they're all different, but it's pretty funky. Oh, right. So those that are yeah. listening and watching, we have ourselves... What? A beautiful kind yeah, of... Yeah. Tie-dyed looking yeah. blue... Purpley, pinky, uh, <laughs> bit of uh, fucking wax. Yeah, as well. for real. Never done that kind of effect before. That's incredible. That's incredible. Mm. What's it do to you when you've you see the end product and? Uh, oh, it feels great to hold it in the in the hands, yeah, man. Because yeah. it's like that album is about two years in the making. Mm. And actually, when I moved out of the UK, 
I didn't really write lyrics for nearly a year, really? which was like one of the longest times in in my career. I did notice that. It, 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 there was I definitely had a kind a... of a break. Like yeah. I've been going so hard for so long. Mm. And then obviously the whole COVID thing happened mm. around that time. That's when we're like, oh, let's just go traveling, you know, mm-hmm. like me and the missus got a, a, a van and went off to Portugal. And CEOs then... can do that, you see. <laughs> they can do that. They but it was mad. Breaks. Like I was working, you know, in my van off a laptop in the back of a van for like a few months. Yeah. Mm-hmm before we got our spot and um and yeah that like you know that's I didn't have a studio so there was no option and then you know I was just questioning like do I want to do this anymore kind of thing like, really yeah almost that was for a the real first question. time yeah. just because I dedicated so much of my life to it I was like oh maybe I just want to do the dad thing and I don't know and then um, Verb T like hit me up and like wanted me to do a feature verse for him and Ill Informs project and I was like yeah go on I'll do it and I just had bare fun doing it. And yeah. I did that for, and someone else wanted a feature, so I did that. And then I, I, I got in the swing of things and I found a new producer, Elliot Ravel. No one really, he's like just coming out now. Nice. But he's been producing for like 15 years. Big he up, produced yeah. the title track on the album. Sick. So I did a few joints with him and the spark, bang, was just back in, back on. And um, Was this I, widely publicised that you were, were thinking about? No, no. No, not at all. I haven't said a peep of it at all, to be yeah. honest. That's exclusive right here. Oh, <laughs> Genuinely, I was like, as you said it, I was like, bro, like, was, what? You were going to stop. Art. No, I mean, I wanted to, I always said I wanted to do nine albums. This is the ninth album. Right. And I always said that I, I want to do four Four Hours albums. And we're making the fourth Four Hours album. So sick. For another exclusive. Yo, come um, on, son. But yeah, so like, that's, that's what I wanted to, to do. 13 albums, nine mm. solo, four. I'm blatantly going to continue doing more. Yeah. But I really fell back in love with the creating process when I was making this album. Mm. And, you know, for me, I feel like this is one of my best albums I've ever made. Wow. Definitely but some of the best of the last few. Like, my other favourite was Patterns of Escapism that mm-hmm. I did with Ill-Informed. Uh-huh. That was a real favourite. Banger. Yeah. This one is really cohesive as well. I've proper taken it. It's just pretty much straight up classic boom bap the whole way with... All, all the like high focus gang features and producers on it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and trust me, there's some fucking hitters on here. Jazz T, uh, Four Hours, obviously. Um, Coops Verb T, King Cashmere. Come on, I mean. Leaf Dog. Leaf Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ransom Bad Bones owner yeah, Capono. Huge, huge, huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no jokes. Yeah, man, it's nice. So, Boom yeah, bat we... is what people expect, isn't it? Mm, do, I... do you ever run the risk of? going off genre in it that's the thing I've experimented on with loads of different sounds on all of my albums yeah. and I just that's the sound Boom Bap is the sound that I love it's the sound that resonates with me most you know I'll smash up a double time beat or a drum and bass thing or whatever but yeah, like, don't underestimate the kids you know what I mean still hip hop classic hip hop is what what you know what yeah. I love in it and yeah. I think that's what my fans love so yeah they do I just make what, what I love and they love it so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but there's, there's, there's a, a pocket for it mm. Yeah, um, yeah, and and uh, you know, you live, and I was saying this at the start before we recorded. You understand? Mm. You live that thing. Mm. You provide for a scene. Yeah, but you don't actually benefit as a a, a fan because mm. you've created the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the thing that gets you? What 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 labels outside of the mm. obvious? Yeah, yeah. What well, outside of I focused? Do, do you do you? Check mm. what labels. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not too many, like, really. Blah yeah. Records, I rate what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, there's the RLD, which is Leaf and Beavers thing, what they just put their stuff out on. Yeah. But in terms of, yeah, you can. That's Revolg as well. We'll Yeah, Revolg Records yeah, yeah. as well. They smash it. There is quite a few doing yeah. good bits, man. Yeah. I, but I, I encourage it, man. I want the more labels, the better. The more yeah. artists, the more people putting work into the scene. It yeah. will help. Everyone helps it grow. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever been faced with confrontation on that level of like you know haterism shit like that anyone ever well, you've mm. been like man it's not me bro i'm not that <laughs> you know you've had that you've i heard... don't know not, not not personally really most people just show love i'm sure people people all people say things and that but like yeah. we just do our thing yeah exactly if That's you like spirit. it come through if not all good yeah yeah, yeah exactly because <laughs> haters love you too yeah, yeah forget for that real. um and you're not just yeah i mean when you say hip-hop you are full full mm. corners you love graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love DJing. You love all mm, the genres. Yeah, for real. Chad my hand at it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, you know, big up Dyke as well, because he's most definitely in the graph game as yeah, well. Yeah, for real. Um, big up uh, uh, Doubter as yeah, well. Yeah, big up Doubter. Yeah, OG. Yeah, yeah, all the OG. They, they're watching, you know. Yeah, for real. Um, 
Do you ever you ever gone out painting? You ever? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, for real, man. Yeah. Back in the day, I was I really I was really rated it, man. I was into it for a while. What did you write? Ah, God, <laughs> nothing, nothing anyone would know now. But if you know, you know. Yeah, right? but if you know, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Um, no, but basically, that was that was before rap for me. You know, when I when I was growing up, I was seeing you know Zombie, Cars, mm. Take, Band, all them, all mm. those guys. DDS, South, Boys, yeah, South DDS is what, what I sort of grew up seeing, mm. and that inspired me to get into it, into the culture. You know, I was messing around for a, for for a while, and then. Um, people around me, you know, I see people getting in trouble and stuff. And that's when I kind of like found hip hop and fell in love with that. And I made a decision to like push my creative energy in that direction. Although I still love the graph. Mm. For me, I wanted, I don't know, I just like writing the bars. It's, a, it's the same kind of thing, like, you know, mm. um, it's just writing in a different way. Mm. And that was, that filled that joy for me and and has led on to like, you know, make me have a career that I can support my family off, but still be satisfied with what I'm doing, you know? That's fucking cool. And I got mad love for, for the graph culture, man. Yeah. It's big Big up, you said band as well. A great band. Big you, up band, man. Yeah, he's man. An OG. He's an OG. Like, for people... Right. Dick, but I love he's that. He's a dumb. Good, good guy. Yeah. Um, all right, top, top five MCs. Let's get into it. Your top Ooh. five MCs right now. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? All right, Chester P. Ooh, yep. For sure. Uh-huh. Um, skinny man. All right, you know. I'm that. also thinking a lot about inspiration. You yeah, know, for sure. For me. Big up Mud Fam, my family. The Come character on. that he brings is yeah. like next level. The social commentary, it's just the, the longevity. Yeah. Um, maybe a slight sort of curveball here, Ooh. but like gets nice. for me because yeah. there's a section I don't, don't listen to as much grime now but there's a section of my life that I did listen to quite a lot of grime and gets for me is just his pen game mm. is ridiculous the flows are ridiculous um, yeah man just always always really rated mm. rated him two um, more two more Ooh. pressure's on <laughs> <laughs> the popcorn has... It's, it's hard, isn't it, when you start saying him. King Kashmir has to be one. Nice, yeah. Um, it's, it's mad, you know, he's one of my best mates, but I still, he's in my top five. Mm. Um, his voice, his delivery, you know, his off-the-wall bars, his references, mm. the esoteric kind of side. Yeah, yeah. And then you got... And then it's got to be Big L. <laughs> Big L? <laughs> For Fucking, real. Come on, yeah. For real. Yeah. And I know that's four UK and one US, which... Most people might ha not have it that mm. UK heavy, but that's that's the inspiration for me. Mm. That's what spurred me on to write, and um, you know, mm. and it's great to be working with working with pretty much everyone on that list as mm. well. Pretty much, you literally are or have. Yeah. I mean, obviously, not apart from L. obviously Big L yeah. and uh, yeah. <laughs> and not Gets, maybe that happened one I day. I think Premier would go, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah, like for real. that's a that's seismic. Um, all right, who should we be looking out for? Right now, as a, mm. as an A and R of a label, mm -mm. who's out there? You're like, yo, check this, this dude. for real. Yeah, um, girl out, check this out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just dropped um, Renell eight nine three. He dropped a new EP today, produced by King Kashmir. Nice. Called Coco Butter. Wicked. So we run that up. That's the latest high focus signing. He's a G do. man. Yeah, do it. New young generation coming mm. through, mm. and um, look out for Tremendous's new album. Ooh. Great on purpose. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah, for real. Um, that's just come out, and um, yeah, man, look out for lots of King Kashmir stuff coming as well. Dude. And the new Four Hours album and the new Flip Tricks album. <laughs> and the wheel keeps on turning. Yeah, for real. Does it, do, do you never stop? Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna stop, are you? No, no. <laughs> Chunt Tunnel Vision. Yeah, yeah, for real. It's fantastic. Brother, thank you so much for coming. Much on. love, man. Smack Big up, brother. Yeah, you know thank it. Thank you, man. <laughs> you know it. Hey, it took a long time coming, but here, yeah, we're out here. We're doing it. Killer Keller podcast out like him was out of fashion. Sharing is caring. We ain't doing this for our helves, you know what I'm saying? We're doing it for the culture and the spread of information. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Cheese. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right.